frontier. This is Football Daft with Stephen Purden. Midfield dynamo and average actor. Chris Toll. Target man. Suspicious character. And... In the top end of Stevenson, Grenado! Welcome along to Football Daft. It is, of course, the Daft the Scottish Football Podcast around. I'm producer John, and let's introduce the team. Uh, first of all, let's welcome a man fresh off of Breakfast Show Radio. And I'm not talking about Grado. It's Stephen Purden making his Breakfast Radio debut this morning on Clyde 2. Or sorry, the Greatest Hits Network heard around Scotland. You could hear him everywhere with you and Cameron. How's it going, guys? You alright? Alright, how are you feeling after your first breakfast shift, mate? Just tired, guys, you know, but I'm alright. I'm cracking through it, man. Right. Ah, good, good. Kid, no, mate. It was a piece of piss. shoes are all at it, man. No, what, what, what were you talking about on the radio? Fuck, oh, mate, you know, bit of this, bit of that. Slagging you and, man. Slagging each other. Then having to pick songs. I've doing like a top 40 for like Scottish songs. Right, okay. What I picked uh, Head Rolls Off by Frightened Rabbit. I'm sure they would have played that on the radio. It's not in the fucking system, is it? I'm, I'm not surprised. That, come on, you've got to play the audience here. See, you need to get... I know, I know, I know. I can't you have not went for Vienna. No, but before... I... That's not a Scottish song, Toll. No, it's no Scottish song. I, I wouldn't take that as a Scottish song because Midge Ure was Scottish, but the rest of the band were English. Aye. Who, who wrote it, but... Mm. Hey, do you know what? Do you know what? I knew that was going to be the case, right? So I had a backup. Had a backup with a story and all that behind why I picked it. Right. Franz right, right. Ferdinand, take me out. It's an anthem. Like a fucking love an song. Anthem. It's a fucking anthem. So right. I picked that. That was in the system. So I had a wee bit of banter slagging... You and I had a few jokes saying, I bet you Bowie's going in the system and all that. And I mean, that fucking bet you Bowie would have played fucking Frightened Rabbit for me and all that, but just winding them up. But it was all good. It was a very, very enjoyable couple of hours. It's always a pleasure having a bit of banter with Mr. Ewan Cameron. It's all right. Good, good. And that man you heard there, of course, is a man who's got us all reminiscing this week on the group chat about teletext and CFAX after he was chatting about bamboozle. On teletext. Oh, man. Remember it, man. Remember it well. I know. It's, it, for younger listeners, this was before the internet. We had a thing called teletext on the telly where you'd find out information. It was, it was, it was kind of like the internet, wasn't it? It was like Aye. the internet. Aye, it was like the internet. But we're having this big debate now. Maybe the football daft listeners can help us out here. What pages were the football on on uh, CFAX and tel- uh, teletext? I think... And I, I and remember would, one. I thought it was one four zero on IT. Uh, was C- was CFAX no at three one zero. I thought it was three zero two. I thought it was four zero two. Right. But is that on channel three? Channel three was one thirty. Was it not? Was it, I thought it was one four zero. Maybe I I one for I, <laughs> anybody anybody that can help us out anyway. Give us a shout. It's been, it's really, it's been really. I actually awful. done a, a Google search and I couldn't oh, find it. Could you not? Know no, nah, I couldn't like, find it. Next week's big question, what were the football pages for CFAX <laughs> and Teletext? Oh, uh, next week's big question, what's the big story that you remember reading about on, on, te- CFA- <laughs> on Teletext or CFAX? <laughs> <laughs> waiting for it to load on, waiting for it ages to load up, you know, as it went to school. I went, remember the football pages, it would scroll through, you go, fuck, I've not read that yet, and you'd have to wait for <laughs> <laughs> Oh. oh. I used to count down. I used to count down the seconds. It, it changed over. <laughs> My father was still using CFAX now. He still gets it. He no, still he says. Can't. He still say. Ah, he still get teletext, man. And press the button on his fucking hand. He tells me I was reading it on the teletext this morning. Oh, shit! What the teletext has it been? Stevie, Stevie, see my dad. My dad used to call the podcast the iPod. So it might just be getting mixed up, man. No, I think right. Hold on, right. I think. He's getting it's confused with the internet, Stevie. That's what's happening. Oh, he's on that teletext thing on the computer today. Hold on, hold on, hey, hold on. I find bamboos. I couldn't find it anywhere on Google. I think what he's talking about is right. Right. When you press, like, see on certain channels, press the red button. Right. Yeah. I'm on it to know. It gives you news, does it? Gives you news. You can go into right. that sports bit. So I think he's doing that on his telly. Oh, right, okay. he, always says, he always says to me when he comes up, 
I was reading that in the teletext this morning. I was reading that in the teletext. <laughs> but it's, it's this thing, it's like, you still call, like, you know, we now Sky Plus things and that. I still yeah. call it recording. As, or I, mate, I still call it taping, I. I still call ah, it taping. I've taped it. Oh, I'm a wee bit more. If somebody says something about a programme, like I've got that series link. I've series linked it. I oh, say that. No but problem. a lot of things I do still say taping. I'm a millennial I've seen... of you, Stephen. <laughs> 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 I've serious link Dexter. I can't just cope with the one a week too. So I've only watched I've only watched the first episode. I've watched I've watched the first three. It's fucking it's good. It's it's you a know slow what? burner, but it's good, man. I, I didn't I didn't even get watch any of Dexter, but my wife did and she goes, oh, you didn't really have to have seen the, the like whole Dexter to sit down and watch it. It uh, kinda gives you a good. recap at the start of the first, aye, first aye, episode. Aye, 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 aye. It's good, it's good. Anyway. Series linking taping, C fax, teletext. <laughs> uh, get in touch with any of that for the next that, week's show. That was just daft. Now for the football. Now for the football. What has been happening, Chris? No much, guys, man. No much. No much. Right, well, let's uh, we have to talk quite about. Quite week. Quite week in Scottish quite, football. Right, let's talk about it, Chris, because uh, you obviously, you and Ryan talked about it on Celtic daft. Mm-hmm. Through to the final of the League Cup. Happy with what you saw? Well, as I explained on Celtic Daft, I was I was priorly engaged, so I never got to watch the game on Saturday because I had the Barrowland show. Yeah. So um I watched the extended highlights and it looked as if St Johnson made it quite difficult, but uh I am obviously delighted to be into the final and I don't know man, I'm starting to get a wee bit I'm starting to get a wee bit. <laughs> well, okay. Okay. Just kill your jets just now, Christopher. Just kill your jets. We're I a know, month away from the old firm game, six know, weeks out. Um, but yeah, Ed, good. Obviously, James Forrest returning, scoring the goal. That's a big plus for, for Celtic if you can get him back to form. Oh, definitely. That's what I was saying to Ryan as well. It, Abada has been terrible for for a while now. He's only um, 19, though, isn't he? So. I, know, I know, but it's fundamentals, John. He, he, he loses the ball a lot pass, with bad passing. And stuff like that, but uh, aye, it's good to have Forrest back because as much as I've been critical of him in the past, you know, I mean, he, he, he can't argue with his record, he scores goals and he gets a lot of assists as well. So, yeah, he's a big, know, he's, he's a big, he's one of these big number players that people aye. go on about now, isn't he? Yeah, he is uh, definitely, he would definitely do a job here. Uh, so that was Celtic on the Saturday, Rangers on Sunday. We discussed this at length with uh, Stevie Clifford from Four Lads. Had a dream on Rangers staff, Stephen. Still struggling to get over that, or is the Van Bronckhurst rub made you happier? Well, that okay, that didn't sound right. I came, I came in for the rehearsals there. I had my jacket and my boot in the car. I didn't put it on the day because I was just running to do the breakfast show this morning. Yes. Then I went to panel rehearsals. It was pretty busy. Came out the motor. for I'm going to bring my jacket in. Wait to hang my jacket up. Emptied my pockets and my ticket was still in the pocket for the game, and it just brought it all flooding back. It's like Nam. It wasn't Nam. It's it. It was quite simply. I mean, you know how angry I was, John. I know you're sitting there smirking. Tall. I know the smirks coming on your fucking Chevy chase in a minute and all. And yeah, it's fine. Smirk away. Smirk away. It's fine. I was fine. Fucking... It's like Ross. It's Ross from Friends. I'm. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. Ross is fine. <laughs> Uh, I'm fine. It was fucking absolutely fucking shite. Ooh. Terrible. I, the anger levels in my body still haven't disappeared. Uh, it was beyond fucking comical at times, man. Yeah. The way we played. And it was, I fucking hate Habs or not. <laughs> fucking uh, hate them. And um, I guess your your hate will increase after Ryan Porteous' beautiful piece oh, of shit house oh, fucking, oh, oh. Wait, wait, come on, st- you've got to take your tip your hat to it Ryan It wasn't Portia. even that good because Emma didn't even ask him oh, the didn't question. Start, man. Emma, Emma didn't even ask him a question. And then do you know what is even worse? I've seen on Twitter, they've released a fucking T-shirt on the Hibs website and it says... Don't ask me. Do I look happy? Do I look happy? Fucking tin pot, man. Honestly, don't even get me started on it, man. He is a... See him? See him? See him? I would love to fucking play him at FIFA again because I'd fucking scalp him again because I can't... He's, he's fucking... I seen him when he came here, man, because I was sitting right in the 18-year line 
Boyle scored the third, the third goal, his hat trick. They were running air. Porteous comes there, giving it the fucking like kid on his fucking Scott Brown when I'm mad. Oh, yeah, fucking. Oh. <laughs> Don't get me started. If you if you are listening, Ryan, you're welcome on the podcast anytime. Are uh, you I, fuck, Ryan? <laughs> you can, I, sorry, you can come on say like daft. Well, do you know what? He's working his ticket. He's working his ticket for you, man. He will be on say like daft for you at some point because that's he doesn't. Even, that's that's what he's doing. It's all, it's all about us with him. He just wants to rail us. Yeah, he's not even riding me, but I'm not even bothered. <laughs> <laughs> um, other, other games it's horrible, go- man. I hate another thing to add to the mix. Sorry, more. Yep. I will not be going back to Hamden. Right. I'm fucking sick yet. Even if we get to the Scottish Cup final, I am not going. I will give my ticket to one of my pals or my wee brother. I'm no fucking gone. I Why? hate getting air there. I hate the place. I hate the outskirts here. I hate trying to get the motor park. I hate the stadium. I'm no fucking going back. And you've heard it here first, everyone. You can expect to see Stephen Purden at the Scottish Cup final if they get there. There is no way you're not going to Scottish Cup. Yeah, I know an R Cup final will not be going to. <laughs> there we Fuck go. <laughs> <laughs> We're off. Uh, <laughs> Uh, going back to the Premiership at the weekend as well, uh, good result for uh, Motherwell against Hearts. Didn't see that, that one. Was, that was a good result. And I, I was speaking to Mr. Cameron about that this morning. That was a good result. The bu- the, the bubble has burst at Tynecastle. Well, obviously the game is at Fir Park, but yeah. Hearts, the bubble has burst with Hearts, I think, a wee bit. Uh, it'll be interesting to see where they go from there. You've uh-huh. got them quite soon, Stephen, haven't you? <sighs> Aye, they'll, they'll get a result again. Hell. Don't know. Depends. Bring, what bring in Craig Levina, I say. Aye, get 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 get, get Levina Jeffries in instead of the ship, man. What's <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, the, the the our big talking point probably from the weekend um, was the send off of Ojo against Dundee United for Aberdeen. Uh, what did you make of that? It was absolutely fucking comical as well, man. It was. It was. I mean. I, I mean, I would love to. I'd love. Did the ref explain it after it? Did did did, did anybody ask the ref? Did I mean, it? I'm guessing, I'm guessing he's gone. I mean, it's been it's, the red cards uh, not been overturned because they've been put appealed. But but by the letter of the law, and this is what they're saying is he's inside the crowd. He's went in, you know, and he's been pushed and got a pie thrown at him. But by even making that move towards the crowd, it's a second yellow and a red card. You know. I mean, they like, say right. Did, was it a second yell or did he get it? Was a second yell, second yell. Right. Oh, so it was a second yell. That changes things a wee bit. Aye, it but, does for me as well. Aye, but, but still, man, like, surely the paramount fucking importance, right, at the game is the safety of the players from the referee's perspective, right? He's kind of went into the crowd, but it's not like he's good in the crowd. It's not like he's scored a goal and he's good in the crowd and he's incited this. That absolute clown's just pushed the boy. So he's retaliated a wee bit. Surely a word in his ear, common sense should prevail in that. A wee word in his ear and go, just get on the pitch, leave it. No one ever yak here, man. That's for me, it's just the referee trying to fucking make headlines for himself. Yeah. Right. I, it's, I understand what you're saying there, but like, what you're saying as well, John, if you're going to the letter of the law, you know, like like we like to do when it's a Ryan Porteous tackle, then it's a red <laughs> card, isn't it? I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, in this talk, you might just start digging up old shit, right? <laughs> well, I mean, it's the thing is, it, it seems to just be coming into yeah. to the game a lot more. You know, you look at what all the stuff that's happening in France at the moment. Look at the the, the Tav incident against Hibs. Um, was it last season? Aye. You know, the, uh, ran, the fan, the fan went on, went on the pitch a wee bit at the side of the touchline. He's pushed them. He's pushed them back. But like, oh come on, man. What is the game coming to when you're getting a guy a second year for that? I don't, I don't think it's. I remember like there was one where one of the, the people ran onto the pitch, one of the fans ran onto the pitch, and actually hurt one of the players, and the player hurt him back and get sent off a straight red card. I don't think that that should be a red card. See if you, sh- the first thing you should be able to defend yourself. Uh, see if it's Aye. another player, if you're another team, and you hit him back, then mm-hmm. fair enough. But when it's somebody that's come out of the crowd, you don't know that guy could have a knife or anything. Do you know what I mean? So here's here's a thing. Say the linesman, right? A guy pushes a linesman. The linesman goes there and pushes him. What's the ref got to do? Tell the linesman to fuck off down the tunnel. 
It's a valid point. He's got. He, point, he's, he's, he's going to support his fucking his his squad. His he team probably abandon the game or something. Like that, wouldn't they? Mm. Like the referee in, like big John Beaton. Uh, yeah. in, big John, big It'd be John interesting Beaton. to see if the players were they done. I to the linesman. I stopped him. Just today he was a mile on side. I mean, afterwards as well, there was an altercation with a fan. Uh, we're all joining the police and they're investigating that at the moment. So it's 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 just it's got to stop. It's got to stop. So well, that that'll be having finished in Scottish football anyway. You think so? I mean, these players like like he's on loan. Hey, he's he's on loan at Aberdeen, isn't he? Ah, uh, I think he is. Ah, uh, he'll be he'll be heading back down the road. Aye, aye, right. I was saying, thank you. See, signed permanent. Did Stephen Glass sign him? Aye, because he did he not arrive at the same time as Rangers Ojo, and there was this whole confusion about the Ojos. I'm not sure, man. I'm not sure, but the thing is, right? It's like all walks of life. You're not allowed to say certain things now. You need to watch what you're saying. There's the fucking fake offended mob. And then there's a fucking football player pushing a fan back after the fan pushed him first, and the football player gets sent off. Fuck off. Yeah. To be no. fair, Eric can't have done time for it. <laughs> I bet. <laughs> big, big Duncan, oh, but that was a that wasn't a fan. That was a player he did wasn't it. Aye. 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 that was different. Yeah. Well, we'll see, we'll see what happens there. Um, good news uh, today. Last night, it was a bit of a worry about John Fleck, who collapsed. Oh, yeah. during the FL Giant. He's won against Reading. He's been discharged from hospital now Jesus. after collapsing, which which is great news. Have uh, they said what it was? Well, they don't know. It says United uh, medical staff will continue monitoring him closely. In a club statement, um, comprehensive medical examinations have taken place, and uh, United and John Fleck would like to thank all who assisted at a stressful time last night and everyone for their supportive messages. So they'll be looking into it, but it's just... It's happening too much. That's it. It is. It's happening on, you know... I mean, we've obviously... Motherwell supporters, Celtic supporters, Phil O'Donnell, the, you know, the Muamba, the Bo and... Um, Ericsson. Ericsson. It's just... The one, the one that kind of started it all, but was remember Mark Vivian Foy. Vivian Foy, mate. The, 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 the Confederations oh, Cup. Horrible. That, that image, horrible. Him just with his horrible. eyes. Horrible. Oh. Oh. Horrible, horrible, horrible. Yeah. But I mean, it's, it's obviously they're, they're putting more into football now. There's more medical assistance on there. You look at the quick thinking um, at the Newcastle game. Uh, yep. if, if, if I, you, this is, see, right, this is me and my missus were talking about it last night when I found out what happened with John Flick when I was sitting talking about it. And she's like, what's going on? And then we go on to the subject. She couldn't believe some of these football players that smoke and all that, right? And I'm going, you'd be surprised. I remember years ago seeing fucking Michael Ball and Barry Ferguson and all that, and they'd always be having a, a sly fag and all that. Michael Moles was a, a big smoker. Michael Moles. Russell, 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 Russell used to have a smoke at half time. George Alberts. But here's my thing, right? It's like, what you just said there, John, nowadays you've got, like, nutritionists. You've got fucking this and looking after your numbers. You fucking get your heart rate took. Sports your science, fitness. sports science. Aye, sports science. All that, right? Yet you start hearing many of this happening, whereas back in the day, man, you're like your Georgie Bests, your fucking Jim right, Back. Hold on a minute, hold on a minute. No. Are you suggesting that everyone no, no, should no, get no, smoke no, when you no, no, what I'm saying is, why? I'm not, I don't, I'm not making a point. Right. This isn't a this isn't a statement, it's a question. Right, okay. Why, why is it all happening now? What is going on? Like, what is going on when you've got all these experts who are looking into every player's individual? They've, they've all got programs. They've all got this happening. They've got training see, programs. That, I think you see back in the day, you probably trained twice a week, so there wasn't as much stress on your body. But that's my point. That's what I'm trying to say. Is how are these things happening? Like, is there too much stress on the players, professional well, level? Well, they're probably they're training, what, four, four days a week, maybe five days a week. And train, right. train will be more intensive than ever. Yeah, that, sometimes, that. sometimes they're travelling all over the world. Sometimes they're uh, they're playing two or three games a week. Mate, you know, that's my point. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the intensity, especially the way the modern game is played with the high press, the fitness levels it takes to mm -hmm. play that kind of game. I, I, well, I'm not for a second saying players should boot, drinking pints and smoking fags. What I'm saying is... It's a bit ironic back in the day, didn't they really hear about this as much? But no, uh, there's players on the pitch at fucking peak fitness levels, absolute athletes, and they're collapsing and nearly dying. Yeah, yeah. Is there, is there an argument that they're, 
they're too fit. That's what that's what me and my missus were saying last night. Is there such a thing as these guys being too fit? All right, listen, I think you and Nicola should take this to the medical. <laughs> <laughs> I'll turn up, man. I'll state my case while I sit and whip out 20 club and fucking a wee hip flask and all that and go, what's going on here? Know what I mean? <laughs> Sitting with a fucking vape and all that. <laughs> Sit down, Stuart. We need to have a word. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, best of luck to John Fleck and his family. Hope we... Aye, get well soon, John. Oh, yeah, well, I just luck. remember that's who we were talking about, man. You made mm-hmm. a joke out there. Yeah, I didn't know that, obviously. See, we but... see, we'll hopefully see him back in Scotland jersey soon and back at Sheffield United as well. Now, for the daft stories of the week, Gradle's gutted that he'll be missing this this week. Yeah. Uh, but by the way, we didn't say Gradle's. <laughs> Gradle's often we've, we're putting out on paternity because he's knackered, he's doing panto, he's doing radio. He was on Games Master this week as well. I'm doing radio, panto, and river. Sorry, Sorry, but I'm still here, you know what I mean? So it's all right. I'm renovating a house. And there you go. And he's fucking re- doing at the Barris, fucking doing wrestling shows and all that. Oh, but you're still here, mate. You know I mean? I know. Right. Well, it's Grado's favourite part of the show uh, where we pick out a daft story of the week. So, boys, would you like to hear about Chris Hemsworth's personal trainer banning millennials and fitness posers from his gym? Would you like to hear about a hamster who returned from the death after 17 months feared? Chris Hemsworth. Oh, you got Chris Hemsworth? You've not gone for the zombie hamster? I'll, I'll go for the zombie hamster. Right, i tell you what, I've got a cast and vote then. I want to talk about the, the hamster, because the turn, this is the story. Uh, the hamster returns from death 17 months after family feared it had been eaten by the dog. Elspeth Go believed the Springer Spaniel Lucy must have eaten two-year-old pa- Pablo when he suddenly vanished. They were shocked when the rough hamster returned uh, this month <laughs> after, as if nothing had happened. A family who, uh, it was feared Pablo had disappeared in Lark Hall in June 2020. Mum Elspeth Gold believed nine-year-old Spaniel had eaten it. Uh, presuming he was dead, Elspeth... Yeah, I'll tell you what, I bet there's no many Pablos in Lark Hall. <laughs> <laughs> Elspeth and the family got rid of the cage and they put up a message on social media saying, has anyone got a hamster cage? Pablo has just returned from the dead. He's, he's, he's obviously, Pablo, for that call, he's just went a bit too far celebrating 55. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? We've all done it. We all done it. Pablo to escape either, is he? <laughs> 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 but do you know what everyone we we've talked about this on the radio before that everyone has hamsters come to the end in the most terrible ways like in the most comical ways as well yeah hamsters like, escape cages and they'll end up in washing machines and everything and it's a tragic stories but everyone has a a hamster death tale i don't suppose you've two uh, ever owned a hamster i, but- I, I had one no long ago same it's not a death, though. <laughs> we just gave it away. All right, okay. Then... It's probably dead now. But has right. a hamster... Here's a question. Has a hamster ever died of natural causes? I don't think it has. I think it's all natural causes when it's a hamster. <laughs> oh, oh, you had that big fucker, didn't you? Aye, man, I had a... What happened to him? What was the name of the hamster, too? Uh, Bell. Bell, or what uh, happened it was to a, Bell? Yeah, a second-hander. They took it, took it off of somebody and... Uh, the, the family that had her just like never paid her any attention so she wasn't used to like interaction with humans or anything like that and the first day I got her I went to take her out of the fucking cage and she took a chunk out my finger I was like take Sammy we're getting rid of that fucking thing but, uh, <laughs> but over time over time I used to sit and watch the telly night and the wee hamster cage would be behind me and she'd climb up onto the bars and watch the telly with me and I I fucking ended up loving this wee thing right so uh what were we doing? We were decorating the living room, right? So we had to put had to put her out of the living room into the back room. And we went back into the back room the next day, man. And she was fucking stuck in the tube. <laughs> right. And she she even <laughs> she even hamsters die. I think they expand or something. Right? <laughs> Mate, honestly, it was like the fucking see what a snake looks like when it sets something. That, that's, what I, that's what this tube looked like. I was fucking devastated, man. Sorry, honestly. No, I know, I know, I know. I know. Loss. Don't get me wrong. It's fucking. It's a hamster in the grand scheme of things, but it was. I oh, I was like, I actually, if I hadn't put her in the back room. <laughs> 
Well, I would like to dedicate this um, uh, week's football daft to the memory of of Bell Toll. Bell Toll, uh, rest. Uh, the reason we kept the name Bell because Bell Toll. Ah, oh, from the Bell Tolls. Ah, oh, the Bell I mean? Tolls. That's why we kept the name. But anyway, I God rest you, Bell. God rest you, Bell. God, God rest you, you, darling, wherever you may be. <laughs> if you've got any hamster death tales, please. <laughs> so we, we can do them in next week's podcast. That would be brilliant. I will read them out. For this week's podcast, however, we charge on without Grado on the big question. Chris said it last week. We want to know how many of the current Scotland squad would get into the France uh, 98 squad. So we I feel like we've been talking about us for like four weeks. We uh, were talking about it last week. Only last week. It was only last week. Did we talk about it on Rangers after and all that? I think we did, I we did, I we talked about it with Stevie on Rangers Dark. Aye, because you asked Stevie, yeah. and he said Billy Gilmore, and then you said who in place of, and he went Zidane. <laughs> it's a fair point, it's Aye. a fair point. Uh, on the open line this week, very special, we've got a band uh, coming on who are just being signed from Scotland, they're called Dankel, we'll be chatting to uh, Lewis and uh, Matty from the band, to find out their crack. Uh, we've obviously got pies to give away, we've got that on the player profile playoff and on teammates this week um we've got uh, is now again so we'll have him on uh, Aberdeen legend I guess he you could put him in legend state he's been in the club for years and years and years now Aye. so he's done that and in Grado's absence I have written three riddles for you boys so we'll three have riddles. Three riddles. <laughs> uh, we will have them later on as well Football daft with G4 claims. Been involved in a road traffic accident? Call them now on 01698 767 172. Right, guys, guys, guys. What are we on now? We're not far off December. I noticed this morning because I don't know if I mentioned that I'd done a breakfast show this morning. So it was kind of. You're on a breakfast show this morning? I was on a breakfast show in Clyde too, mate. The greatest hit station or whatever John calls it. But. Network. What, it's network. What I noticed when I got up, right? My car was frozen, right? It's getting cold in the morning, so there's ice, wee bit of ice in the roads. What does that mean? It's freezing. It's that dangerous. Means, it's dangerous, accidents right? On the road. Accidents can happen, Christopher. That's what I was aiming at. You know what I mean? But, okay. Okay. aye, aye, you get it. And if, you, yeah, if the ice affects you and there is an accident on the road, right, there's only one mob you can call, right? It's G4 Claims, our loyal, proud sponsors. So remember, if you've been in a road traffic accident and you're not at fault, G4 Claims can make it easy for you. They can provide you with the complete accident management support you require. They'll recover the cost from the at-fault party and sort you out with a like-for-like vehicle replacement. They'll also organise your vehicle to be repaired at one of their approved body shops and return to you. Should your vehicle be deemed a write-off, they will recover the pre-accident value of your car and write you a big fat check for it. And best of all, it won't cost you a penny as they charge the at-fault insurance direct. G4 claims, don't cold call. They don't buy data, and once they've processed your claim, your insurance will remain unscathed. And the best thing is, Nicole and the team over there won't take on your case if they don't think they can help. So, if you've been in a road traffic accident or know someone that has, get on to G4 Claims on 01698 767 172. That's 01698 767 172. Get them at notatfaultclaim.com or find them on social media at G4 Claims Limited. G4 Claims... Not at fault claims. Me easy. Right, it's the football daft open line. It's the open line where anything goes. You might want to talk about Giovanni Van Bronckhurst. What do you want to see change at Rangers? You might want to talk about Ryan Porteous shithousery. Or perhaps you might even want to talk about Richard Madeley in the jungle. I've been very disappointed so far. I've been. Oh, I, I don't want to cut you off now. I'll talk about that. No, uh, John, talk, talk, talk to me oh, about Madeley. He started, he started to shine last night. Did he start he started to shine? To shine. Last night? See. When you heard that naughty boy who I want to fucking just call him fucking creepy Arsenal. boy. Arsenal what's the matter with him, man? Right, him and the other woman saying they're leaving and Madeley started losing at me, but 
And he's here, he's like, well, slap me on the face, like, slap me on the face with a fish. Are you leaving as well? <laughs> <laughs> so he's, he, he started out with some partridge isms. Oh, he's not he's went been... full partridge yet, though, has he? Oh, yeah, 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 but it's in the post, oh, definitely. Once he goes full partridge, I am in. Uh, listen, we, we sometimes get in the open line bands. Had a few great bands on the uh, past, St. Phoenix, uh, The Heights, and now we welcome to the show uh, Danko. Uh, we've got Matty and Luke from the band. How you doing, boys? Very good, very good. How are you? Welcome, boys. Welcome. Thanks, Thanks for coming on. Cheers for having us. Uh, now, you guys, we were just talking about before, you guys used to go under the name, the, the Nick and Jack man, um, and kind of Falkirk Denny area, weren't you? Based? That's right, man. That's it. You've yeah, can I just say here, right, usually this podcast is a bit Rangers daft heavy, right? But mm. it's a bit like Falkirk casuals here tonight, and it's two Falkirk well, fans man. here, man. Ah, I mean? well, well, listen to me. me. You know, uh, we've got yeah, Lewis, yeah. who's a Falkirk ah, fan. Give me and Matthew, the Lanarks are hard, man. Oh, ah, right. exactly. <laughs> man, I'm, yeah, I'm North Lanarks, sure. That's uh, nice, well, that's it. We, out, we outnumber them. No, I mean, aye. So, I was just about to say it's so very often that we've got the numbers, but... I know. But I guess that. I'm not sure army kick to kill. Right. <laughs> and, that, and that was a statement there, not a question. Oh, here we go. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Here we go. Oh, <laughs> I was honestly, I was wondering how long it would be. Ah, mate. Sorry, <laughs> man. I went in too soon, mate. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you were in the chat, man, changing name with Danko. Is it named after, I'm intrigued, is it named after, uh, was it Bob Danko who was in the band? Uh, Rick, Rick Danko. Danko. Rick Danko. It was Rick Danko, Danko, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. But where have you put Bob for? I don't know why I thought Bob. <laughs> who's, who's called Bob? No, it's because Bob Dylan was in the band and then Rick Danko played in the band. Yeah, it's fact. Yeah. I basically did the band, right? I get you know. Influence to that, uh, definitely, man. We all love the band and it's kind of one of our main, main influences. So, so. Where, where on the scale of 1 to 10 is the last waltz on your favourite movies? Oh, aye, aye, that's a bit of a... Up there, a mm-hmm. aye, up there for sure. The music's just unreal, but the actual... The, the setup they've got in that, man, it's serious shit. Oh, <laughs> individuals bringing, like, real, real stuff to their band. Aye, amazing. Aye, every it. single one of them could be, like, a front man, if you know what I mean. They're, all of them are just actual... Proper super band. Aye, it's mental, man. But you, you guys, so you guys have got a real Americana sound. Is that where you kind of take your influences from, that that kind of yeah, sound? Yeah. And a lot of newer bands as well, Def, over there that I suppose are heavily influenced by, like, the band and the replacements and stuff like that. More kind of punky stuff as well for back in the day. Um, but I defo that, for me anyway, me and Michael, who we kind of write most of the songs on, like, an acoustic or that, and then bring it into everyone and we all kind of put our spin on it, but Defo, Michael and I are more into that kind of country and Americana stuff. Sounds cool. And see, right, that's quite like all that kind of music as well, mate, right? But yeah. see, see the next time he's up making a video. Yeah. Can me and Toby in it? <laughs> Aye, man. <laughs> I'm not joking. I always wanted a music video on my CV. Definitely, you know. It's like, we're about Kalil, little by little, Oasis, not that. All the actors there, man. I've about, I about, I about been a music video. Right, you've got, there you go, boys. You've got Shell Soup Bob yeah. and Tam Spragan signed up for the next. Aye. We Bob, and, we Bob and Shagger there. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're all sorted for that. Um, like, so you, you, guys, you guys just got signed this year. Now, we... It's a very strangely what I didn't realise that Dyson, the people that make the the vacuum because have set up this label now that you guys have are one of the, the, the signings too. Quite a few bands have been through it, haven't they? So yeah. they've they've got a they've got a record label as well. It's the, yeah. uh, it's the boy's son. It's like a kinda uh that runs it. So He's not uh, gonna be short a bob or two, is he? Fucking nah. hell. <laughs> oh boy, shoes are gonna clean up, man. Yeah. Hey. Stevie, 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 that joke sucks. Oh. <laughs> I apologise, boys. I apologise. Um, I'm so still trying to get a free Hoover off them, but it's not happened yet. I know, man. That's because you're that's 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 one of the fucking modern cordless ones and all that. If you're fucking saying the record. Did you say you were getting a free Hoover? That's a different company, you fucking madman. Yeah, <laughs> 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 I got done by that. Uh, we were all, we were at a gig in London with them, and one of the uh, one of the women who are like uh, represents the main man. I was like, "Oh, can we get a free Hoover?" And she was like, eh, "It's a vacuum cleaner, actually." I was like, "Oh shit!" <laughs> <laughs> and did you get one? No, no, I mean, no, 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 no. 
There's a reason I fucked it, that's all. <laughs> Brand awareness, gentlemen. Brand uh, awareness is a massive <laughs> thing in the record industry. You should do this. <laughs> um, so, yes, I've got um, a new single out, Be Full. You can, yep. some of the, it's, you can stream in all places. Yep. Everywhere. I'm getting all my Spotify as we speak. When this interview is done, I'll listen to it. Trips, oh, I'll get it, I'll get yeah, it, I'll yeah. get it. And you've got, gig, you've got gigs coming up as well. You're playing Tuts soon, aren't you? Aye. February. Nice one. February, February the 21st. Have you played there before? Aye, we played there. We've sold it out uh, a couple of times when we were the Knackerjack men, but so it's good to go back and that, but it's just mm. kind of be good to get past that stage and all. <laughs> you know what I mean? Is it going? Aye, to... aye, I know exactly what you mean, mate. Yeah. <laughs> I know for yeah. <laughs> yeah, but is it, is it all going to be? You playing still Nicky Jack man stuff? Is it all just new stuff in the set? No, it's it's, it's some old songs as well. Some right. we're going to keep playing, but probably know the full. Most of them haven't even released. We recorded aye. them like two years ago and had like, a big bank, and then obviously COVID and that hit, so hadn't, couldn't even release anything. So how, how did you guys? Ones. Yeah, how do you, how'd you guys write over the COVID period? What was the kind of way you got together? Uh, we were we were kind of practicing as much as we could just once it got back to a wee bit of normal and that. We're just it was pretty fucking rough to be honest, man. Just having to write tunes on your phone and that, and just uh-huh. send them each other, see what we can do. But we practiced a fair bit to once we could get back to some kind of normality. We had our own place, and that's so we didn't need to like fucking. Go we can anywhere or that. Yeah, to get in. <laughs> it's like, it's, like, it's going to give you that kind of, I don't know, new new name and all that, new name of the band and give you that total fucking determination. But when you see how hardly hit what well, the entertainment industry was with all that stuff, you know what I mean? Trips, oh, it's, got to, it's got to be, no, like, we all took it for granted. We all did take everything for granted, but with stuff like that happening, now you're back on stage playing songs to a crowd and all that. It must be some buzz. It is, man. man. Aye, so are you just going to do a World Cup song for Scotland? Oh, aye, aye, fucking good shout, good shout. Ah, it's a good it. shout too. Can we bend the video? Keep going for it. Keep going for it. I mean, double cameo, man. <laughs> Let's get into the football, then, boys. Lewis, yes, you are unfortunately like me, a Falkirk supporter. What have you made of everything this season? Oh, mate. And last season, can we? And Jeez. last season, and the season before that, and the season before that. <laughs> we could be here a while, man. We could be. <laughs> oh, no, this season's been... I thought at the start of the season, we looked a lot more organised. and Aye. Like, we were maybe going to... I mean, no past the league or that, but fucking daylight we should be doing and winning that league, but... Jesus, man. <laughs> <laughs> the, the wheels are... It's just so, like, stop-start, man. One day Aye. we thought, then it's, like, fucking back to... Under tens, man. Under tens. <laughs> As by the just everybody the pure chasing the, the ball. Do you know what? <laughs> There's like ten of them in the corner. The bit. Do you know what the best thing about the Falcons stadium? Now I discovered this at the weekend when I was back there. They've now sorted it so you can go to the bar at half time, like so you can. <laughs> Oh, they've now got it. So right, the team's pissed that they can open the bar and we'll make some money at half time. <laughs> and they'll go. I seriously sat in that bar at half time on Saturday, and me and my mates are going, oh, Can we go back in? That is that is fucking genius. It was, it, it's a dangerous, dangerous. Yeah, me and my mates done money that. Making scheme. It is. Me and my mates done that on Sunday before we went out to Hamden for the fucking disastrous Hibs game, man. And we're sitting here, and they were having a few beers, and I was sitting here, like, I could just sit here all day, man. Brilliant, man. It's great. Then you go to the game. The, game, the football ruins it. Ruins it. Fuck. I mean, that, <laughs> that, that, what you just said right there is literally the definition of being a football club fan. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Matty, right. you, you, you're having a better football season. Uh, Mother, Motherwell going pretty well under Graham Alexander. Ah, it's looking good, man. Like it was started off like class, and then there was a slight dip, but I feel like good result at the weekend and that against Harps. So I feel like we could stay all right this season. Like, yeah, top six for Motherwell. Aye, I think so. Like, definitely, man. Definitely. Yeah. I yeah. yeah. Matthew, I've been sitting here trying to figure out who it is that you look like. Like, yeah. can't you look like a wee bit like James Arthur? That's fine. Hopefully, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> I've never clocked that man. 
<laughs> oh, well, boys, listen, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. Really appreciate it. And um, do you want to give a plug for the single and uh, the, the dates at King Tuts? I definitely. Cheers for having us, man. Pleasure at all. Also, your uh, socials and stuff. Have you got any socials that you want to I definitely, man. You can get us on all socials and as Danko the Band. And oh, on our website at dankotheband.com. When he's at King Tuts again, <laughs> James. We play, play Tuts on the 25th of February next year. Brilliant. So it's, Friday, it's a Friday night, so get all the trucks out. Oh, we go. Can and just a big shout out to everybody when look out for Dango's next music video. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Give you a shout, we'll sort it out. Like. Right. Hey, can, can we do it so that like, we've got one of the big long coats and I'm on Stevie Shudders? <laughs> 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 I do, 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 do a dark alley man told you my shoulders big, big long coat and great this is this is the story they're trying to get into the gig like Stevie and uh, and, the aye, aye. The gig. and G- Grado, Grado's a bouncer and Grado's a bouncer aye there you go well, unfortunately Grado couldn't be here this week but there, there's the music video sorted like, boys race oh, it sell, race it sell, lads. We, we, we'll, we'll, we'll get our people to speak to your people we'll take it for our guys Stevie I'm going to be honest we have no got any people mate yeah. <laughs> We are the people. Oh, you are the people. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant, boys. Listen, Matty from Danko, thanks very much for coming on, boys. All the best, All boys. The best, Good guys. luck to everything, man. Cheers, Good luck. Man. Yeah, Bye-bye. Cheers, Cheers. Yeah, boys. Thanks very much to Danko for coming on. Let's move on to our next call on the open line. It is Stuart Ross, who is a Clyde supporter. How are you doing, Stuart? I'm all right, John. How are you? I'm good, mate. I'm good. How are the bully we doing this season? What are you making of them? Uh, uh, it's kind of been up and down a wee bit, I think. Um, we're ninth at the moment. Um, we're six points off your team, John Falkirk. Don't know. Uh, um, oh, oh. Who's going to finish above who, man? Falkirk or Clyde, man? We'll, we'll finish above Clyde. We'll, we'll, Clyde so. doesn't have the game. John, you yeah, don't I'm say that with a lot of confidence. I'm going to say it right now. I'm going to say it right now. We're going to finish above Clyde, even though they are a bogey team. They are absolutely our bogey team. And I'm going to say it right now to Stuart, uh-huh. Falkirk will finish above Clyde. I, I think so. I mean, we're, our season's been up and down a wee bit. Um... We've done all right the past couple of games, though. We've done no bad. We've gotten better. Uh, we've got a Scottish Cup game against Clyde Bank away on Saturday. Oh. Um, I, I, don't know. I used to think that was a derby. <laughs> 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 Clyde versus Clyde Bank. I was speaking to Hugh Keevans today. He's a bit, big Banky supporter. Or a yeah. big fan of it. He was, but it was actually Hugh Keevans was trying to, I was trying to work out how to get on the internet and buy Clyde Bank tops today. I think he, he ended up having to call some woman. <laughs> get quite fine tops today. It was a very bizarre situation that was going on, but um, yeah, aye. Uh, so Danny Lane's still the man for the job. I I think he's he's been getting a bit of stick uh, the last few while just because of the way things have been going. I mean, his his tactics uh, a few home games ago where he played Goody in midfield. Oh really? He played Rob Jones up front, who we got for them Barton. And he only scored what one or two goals against for Dumbarton in about eighteen games or something like that. So it's a bit, aye, but he's getting better. It's getting better. The last few games, um, we've got a few players back for injury. Um, so aye, it's getting better. It's getting better. And, um, we're sitting here talking about Clyde Stewart. I don't know if that's who you're on to talk about or if you're on to make another point. Aye, well, it's a couple of things actually. One, th- I was thinking about this other day. If you could relive one game for your club so you could watch it again, you could be there again, what game would you choose? Yeah, I need to have been at the game to begin with. No, no, no. It could be... Does it have to have been within my lifetime? Aye, aye. Right I would lifetime. choose the Scottish Cup final where we beat Celtic 3-2, Love and Can scored the last minute goal. I would choose... It's a hard one. There's been a lot of good games, man. Um, there's the obvious ones that spring to mind is obviously a 6 2 game and the Barcelona game, but I think I would go for the Scottish Cup final when we beat Airdrie 1 0. Right. Oh, really? Aye, because it was mm. the first trophy that I ever seen his lift. Nice. Really? Do you know what I mean? So, and it was the first time I was there. Uh, for, well, I'd been to the Cup final previous that season where we lost to Rovers. 
So, aye, that was, aye, that's the one I'd go for. I'd go for that's that. A, that's a good answer, mate, the first one. I just, I remember the cup fight, obviously, because it was against Celtic and it was three and it was such a dramatic mm-hmm. game. But even the day in itself, I wasn't at the game. I was with my mates. There was a big squad. We were all very young. I think I was only like 19 or something. And it was just a right good day, man. We were all together and the sun was shining. And aye, it was just, it was one of the days I think Eck had just come in and we'd had a tough season the season before. And it's like the, Cel- the Celtic team then, they were all very hard to beat, man. Very, very hard to beat. But to win in these circumstances, it was spectacular. I had a great day that day as well. I remember that day really vividly, man. Uh, what, what would yours be, Stuart? Um, I've got a couple. Uh, probably one that kind of stands out was Chris and I like this one actually. Um, the I don't remember that game. Well, Roy, that Keane's, game. Roy Keane's debut. Aye, that one. Especially mm-hmm. it was because on the build up it was Roy Keane. That's you know what about Roy Keane and stuff like that. They're all saying oh six nil, five nil, easy. Um, and then to actually be there and win, I actually missed the goals because I missed the first goal because I was doing getting a pie. And I'm it's the second goal because I went to the toilet. Oh no! <laughs> the only goals I seen were the ones that were offside, but it turned out they weren't really offside at the end. Um, <laughs> but I'm not taking that one actually. I'm going to go for the playoff final when we played Annan. So mm. we had Annan away in the first leg, and we lost one nil. Um, Travelled into Annan that night, and uh, we were still confident and stuff. Uh, back to Broadwood. And we beat them 2 0. Um, Mark McNiff scored in the second half to equalise, and then Ali Love scored a penalty because mm-hmm. um, Goody had injured his ankle. So he went off with about 20, 25 minutes to go. But it was just the fact that was, we had waited, like, I had waited personally, what, 10 years to then actually see us getting promoted for League Two into League One. Um, and then I think it was just the celebration after it, where you were celebrating. We went to the wins in Glasgow, uh, and the players turned up. Mm-hmm. So all the players, all the fans, just celebrating. You don't really get that anymore. No, um, so no. that's my that's mine. John, have you got any? I, I've got, probably got a few. I loved beating Dunfermline in the Scottish Cup semi final to get through to the final. That was a fucking magnificent. Loved that. <laughs> Um, it was a great day. Went to the strippers after it. It was fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> Getting your rivals, man, then heading to the jacket. Oh, what, man. A day. <laughs> what a day it was. Uh, and then the other, one, the other one was more recent. It was when we beat Hibs in the playoff, that last minute goal from Bob McHugh um, to, to, to 1 3 2. And it, that never happens to Falkirk. So mm-hmm. right up the town afterwards, and it was just buzzing and what an atmosphere it's the best the the new stadium's ever been you know you, you kind of it felt like Brockville when it's the only time I felt felt the stadium feel like Brockville was from that last minute goal and then the celebrations afterwards absolutely incredible loved it loved it loved it um question before you go Stuart is Broadwood the coldest stadium in Scotland aye it is <laughs> fucking aye. freezing aye as aye, 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 aye. aye. Oh, Pataudry's, Pataudry's up there, but Broadwood, I don't know why. I, it's, I go home there and it's free. Uh, yeah, it's... Stuart, Stuart, I'll tell you this, uh, right? Do you know what's going to lighten up your club and make them oh, here we go. Here we go. More, more exciting? Uh-huh. A young chap plays for Clyde on a Monday night. His name's Leo Purden. <laughs> right? Oh, my, aye, aye. Aye, my son, right? He's he's coming through the ranks. He's only six, so you need to sit tight for a while, right? right. But... Right. Coming through, and I go to Broadwood every Monday night and watch him, and he tears it up. He's going to, he's going to be a big deal for Clyde for a while. Then he'll be going to the Rangers, but ah, <laughs> nah, nah. it can start off with us, get used to it, and then move up. Oh, that's that's, told, that's plenty. <laughs> but um, it wasn't Stuart. Really appreciate you coming on. Great chat about the Billy Wee as well. So uh, thanks for coming. Hi. Thanks, guys. Just thanks a lot, Stuart. Just one other wee thing. Have you guys been to the golf in Glasgow yet to see Kev the Chef? No, we no, haven't. Yeah. Yeah. Kev the Chef. Well, we're actually going on Saturday. <laughs> so Please. the aim is to get a Please. selfie with Kev the Chef. Get a selfie and get a video. Get a video just crowding them going, Kev the Chef, Kev the Chef, Kev the <laughs> Chef. I he loves that. I, he loves that. He's, fucking, he's dining out in that, in that golf thing. Exactly. Brilliant. 
please send us that picture or that video, Stuart. Would really appreciate I, I that. will try and get one eye, definitely. So it's spot on, mate. Thanks for coming cool. on the open line. Thanks, Stuart. Thanks, Stuart. And Cheers, that's guys. It for this week's open line. If you want to get on next week, look out on the socials. Football Dafts. Big question. After watching the recent success of Scotland and the fact we're on the precipice of reaching our first World Cup in 24 years, Chris last week threw out this question. Who out of the current squad would make it into the 98 team, right? So I've got the squad in front of me just to remind you who was at the 98 World Cup. We had Jim Layton, we had Neil Sullivan, and we had Jonathan Gold to choose from in goals. In defence, Tom Boyd, Colin Calderwood, Colin Henry, Tosh McKinley, Derek White, Matt Elliott and Davy Weir and Christian Daly were all the defenders. Oh. Midfielders, it was, well, I, I guess Jackie McNamara was a defender or a midfielder. Jackie McNamara, Craig... Craig the show. But, yeah, Craig keeps saying that. Craig Burley, John Collins, Paul Lambert, Scott Gamble, Billy McKinley was the kind of midfield to choose from. And then up front, you had Kevin Gallagher, Gordon Jukebox Jury, Darren Jackson, Simon Donnelly, Scott Booth were the options. Right, A- Adams is in. I'll tell you what, she... Adams is in. Billy McKinley's gone. Billy McKinley's gone. Adam, so, who, who are you getting no, rid of? I'm, striking? I'm, getting rid, I'm getting rid of uh, Scott Gemmell. Mate, you're doing your best impression of the guy we had on the phone, and man, you need to talk up, mate. Seriously, is it? Ah, it's better. That's better. That's better. Can you hear me a bit better now? That's better. This microphone's fucked, I think. Uh, aye, Scott Gemmell's out. For me. Scott Gemmell is out. I never got the Scott Gemmell hype at all. No, I thought he was terrible. Ka- Callum McGregor's in. Callum so McGregor's is in. so is so is Gilmore. Gilmore, so McKinley, John, John McGinn. Oh, I'd I put John in McGinn. I think just for John, Mc, John McGinn needs to go in as well. So you're taking right, Scott Gemmell's out, John McGinn's in, Billy McKinley's out, Gilmore's in. Uh, I'm taking maybe Craig Burley out and putting Callum McGregor in or not. Really? Maybe. Yeah, I know. Aye. Craig Burley was a good player. It was... And I'm going to take out. Uh, I'm going to take uh, I'm keeping. I'm keeping, keeping Kevin Gallagher, Gordon Jury. It's a toss-up between Darn Jackson and Scott Booth. I'm definitely putting Adams in. I'd put Simon, I'd take Simon Donnelly. And put is Simon Donnelly there? Simon Donnelly is there. So, aye, he's, he's gone an all, man, aye. Yeah. He's, he's sensationally axed as well. Craig, Craig Gordon's got to get a shout in. As the Craig, Go- Craig Gordon's in in place of... Jonathan Gould. Aye. Yeah. I'm get K- Kieran Tierney and Robertson's going in. We said this that the other night, too. I'm taking Tom Boyd out. I'm sorry. I don't make Tom Boyd right. He's going out. Matt Elliott. I quite like Matt Elliott. Mm. Matt Elliott. Um, who do you put in ahead of him? But I think Matt Elliott would walk into that really? Scotland team now. Aye. Uh, centre half. I, I agree with you, too. I think right, Matt, so Elliott, Matt Elliott stays in, so... I think it's more the full-back areas, we're like right, maybe, so we maybe Tierney, is Robertson... McKin- is Robertson in for McKinley then, Tosh McKinley? Aye. He's a fucking champion. He's a better, he's a better player than Tosh. We're, we're sitting here debating that. Andy Robertson's won the European Cup. Aye, t- Tosh, me, Tosh McKinley's dining out in a belt to the cross for Van Hoydonk that Van Hoydonk missed. <laughs> Gorham saved it. I'm going me. I'm, t- I'm going me. Definitely put Andy Roberts in. Kieran Tierney's getting in as well. Right, okay. Right, so we're getting shot at Tosh. Right, so here we go. Right, so the squad would then be, I'm guessing, Jim Layton stays. Yes. Jackie McNamara stays. Yes. Tierney in for Boyd. Yes. Colin Calderwood stays. Yeah, I think, do you think think a good two at the back, man, like would be maybe, you've got Colin Hendry and all. I think, is there, no, is there no place for Grant Hanley? Well, your other defenders, you could, Derek White, you could take a Derek White. I get Derek White to fuck. Derek White. Well, the... replace, Derek, replace Derek White with Grant Hanley. Right, okay. Colin Henry stays. Yes. Tosh McKinley out for Robertson. Yes. Kevin Gallagher stays. Yes. Craig Burley out as he's uh, come, as... Cal Cal McGregor's in. Cal McGregor's in. Gordon Jury stays. Duke Box stays. Jackson stays. 
Just. John Collins stays. Definitely. Neil John Sullivan. Collins John Collins is a fucking manager. <laughs> <laughs> Neil uh, Sullivan. Sullivan stays. It's good we get ready for Craig Gordon. Right, okay, so Neil Sullivan stays. Simon Donnelly's out in place of Shea Adams. Yes. Uh, Paul Lambert stays. Yes. Scott Gemmell's out for Billy Gilmore. Yes. Davy Weir stays. Yes. Billy McKinley is out for McGinn. McGinn, yes. Matt Elliott stays. Yes. Scott Booth stays. Yes. Christian Daly stays. Yes. You missed out Derek White. Derek White got booted out for... Who did we put Andy in? Andy Robertson. Andy Robertson. Yeah. Right. Is that it? <laughs> I think that's it. I saw oh, Grant Hanley. Was that, very quiet for Grant Hanley. Uh, do you know that? Grant I'm, Hanley. I'm, 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 I'm replacing Scott Booth with uh, Nis- Nisbet or Dykes. No way. Aye, what did Scott Booth ever really do in a Scotland team? But Scott Booth, Scott, Borussia Dortmund, he won the European Cup with Borussia Dortmund. Why never? He was on the bench, was he not? Why wasn't he signed the next season? It was Paul Lambert that won the European oh, was Cup. Was he not Plus, on the bench for a Borussia Dortmund? I think Plus Scott Booth shot it. He's won football daft. Right, that's fine. And all right, Scott Booth. Right, right okay. Uh, let's move to the listeners then, boys. You got them there? Yes. Uh, let me see. John has got in touch. He says, once I fix my phone, Calderwood McKinley. Scott Booth all out. In comes Cooper, Tierney, and Shea Adams. Cooper's is that he's left Robertson out. Fuck he's it. left Robertson out. He's left Gilmore out. That's a weird one. Rob says in Gordon, Tierney, Robertson, McGinn, Gilmore, Dykes, and McTominay. Out Gould, Tosh, and Billy McKinley. Uh, Gemmel, White, Burley, and Donnelly. Right, so he's bringing Tierney, Robertson, Craig Gordon, McGinn, Gilmore, Dykes. I guess mm-hmm. just get ready as many select players as possible, wouldn't he? Look? <laughs> <laughs> Ricky says John McGinn Gilmore Gilmorton. Gilmore. 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 John McGinn, Gilmore, Robertson, and Tierney take the places of McKinley, Elliot, White, and Gamble. Mm. Oh. Gavin says, in Robertson, Tierney, McGinn, McGregor, Gilmore, Dykes, and Adams. He's not told us he's going out. He's, he's not giving us the people that are going out. That's a hell of a squad we're taking to this tournament. That is, man, I. Joanne Brown's got in touch and says, without a doubt, Craig Gordon. Off on a tangent here. I remember at the start of France 98, I told my hubby, then boyfriend, and his dad that France would win the tournament. They laughed at me and told me not to waste my money. I could have won a small fortune on that bet. Don't listen to you, Joanne. Men, Joanne, don't listen to the men. No, I don't. We don't know what the fuck we're talking about. John Thompson comes in. He says he would get rid of McKinley, White, Sullivan, Gemma, Lambert and Donnelly. Lambert? Fucking hell. Why would you put Lambert? Out for Robertson, Tierney, Gordon, Gilmore, McGinn and Adams. How can you get rid of Lambert? Can he get rid of Paul Lambert? Can he get rid of Lambert? But, but it's John Thompson's opinion. Uh, and we're all entitled to opinion. opinions. Yep. All about so. entitled. But that, trips was this week's big question. Thanks for uh, getting in touch. And next week's CFAX or Teletext. <laughs> oh, what number was the football page on CFAX and Teletext? Also, what big story do you remember Aye. being broken? What, what big breaking news? What bit of breaking news in the world what, of football what, sport? For, for example, I'll give you a wee example. I remember the day that Andy Cole signed for Man United and being absolutely disgusted at the seven million price tag. I cannot <laughs> believe I can't believe a team are spending that kind of money on a footballer. Disgusting. And he was rage he was raging, turn the channel away and get pumped on bamboozle. <laughs> <laughs> Football daft with G4 claims. Find them on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at G4 Claims Limited. Ho, ho, ho. Merry Christmas, gentlemen. The holidays are coming. Or as the Coca-Cola advert was saying, holidays are coming. Holidays, holidays are coming. coming. Um, season. And Manscaped want to sort you out, boys. The leading men's hygiene brand have launched new products, including their all-new ultra-premium body wash and a two-in-one shampoo and conditioner. It's time to give the gift of Manscaped. 
Get your boss ready for the holiday season by going to manscaped.com and use the code DAFT and you're going to get 20% off plus free shipping. This is going to sort you out for Christmas for any men in your life. I mean, could, would you gift this to, 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 to one of your loved ones? Do you know something? A hundred percent. A hundred percent. What it says, it does, it does, and more. It is. Manscaped honestly has changed the way the hair in my body is. I believe, I believe in Secret Santa at Go Radio last week, Barry Ferg, uh, last year, Barry Ferguson was in the receiving end of Grado's Secret Santa and he got <laughs> some Manscaped product. I might be wrong on this. We will need to confirm with our friend Graham Steveley. Yeah, an awful check. That. That's, that's a, great, think, it's a great gift. I think Barry Ferguson may be a fan of the man. Uh, I'm, 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 I'm mere gutted at the fact that Grado's no spent a tenner. For... <laughs> 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 Aye, he's no spent a fucking penny, but he's been in there like the Billy Big Aye. Shaved Boys, yep. looking like he has. He's Billy, Billy Shaved Boys. <laughs> exactly. No, boys, it's jingle balls to the walls, right? So untrimmed pu- th- pubes, they're a thing I pass. It's possible you might have something down your pants that looks like Santa's beard at the moment, but we can sort this out. We can make your chimney look bra, and this is what you need to do. You need to get Manscaped sorted out in your life. The Inside Performance Package 4.0, you've got to find the Lawnmower 4.0, which is a brilliant bit of kit. It's a trimmer with propriety advanced skin safe technology. It reduces cuts. It's also waterproof, so you can take it into the shower. Uh, and it's basically, it's going to be a gift if you're a lady listening. It's going to be a gift for your partner. You don't want all those. Yeah. Aye, but I'll tell you what, it's a gift for them as well. Exactly, exactly. No longer will you have a pube stuck between your teeth. <laughs> <laughs> the Manscaped Performance Package 4.0 includes the Crop Preserver, the Crop Reviver, anti-chafing ball deodorant, moisturiser and toner, and it's time to keep your North Pole feeling and smelling fresh. <laughs> this hygiene bundle will also come with a pair of Manscaped anti-chafing boxers. Stephen, you're a massive fan of the boxers. Oh, the boxers are comfort personified. They it, are phenomenal. Would it's you phenomenal. say it is the perfect package for your perfect package? It's, <laughs> it is the perfect package for your perfect package. That is a, in a nutshell. There you go. Manscaped's got to be beyond the groin with their new ultra premium body wash. This is the new stuff they've got. It's infused with aloe vera, sea salt, keep your skin feeling clean and nice. They've also got the new two-in-one shampoo and conditioner uh, with the same key ingredients. It's going to hydrate, nourish, condition your scalp, strengthen your hair at the same time. And Stephen, you want to keep that hair job strengthened. Oh, so this is the course. perfect shampoo and condition for you. Of course, of course. And it of course. is, tis the season. Hair job. <laughs> <laughs> it is the season to load up on Manscaped products, so get yourself, your dad, your brother, your friends, the best gift of all with Manscaped this Christmas, and you're going to get 20% off by listening to this podcast. Just use DAFT when you get to the codes, DAFT at manscaped.com, and we're going to get you 20% off plus free shipping with all the Manscaped products there. Get the packages, get it sorted. Clean up your nuts and make Santa proud this year. Football daft with G4 Claims. Been involved in a road traffic accident? Get them now at notitfaultclaims.com. It's a player profile playoff with piesports.com. They will bring you pies to your door throughout the year. You can pick from several packages up on their website. They've got all manner of pies up there. Scotch pies, steak pies, chili pies, cheesy bean, whatever you want. They've got all your pie needs. Uh, and every week on Football Daft, we like to give away pies. Uh, and this week is no exception. As we welcome to the show, someone who's having real difficulties with their microphone, so we have to shout out really loudly. It's Jamie. Jamie, we're going to be quiet so you can talk. There we go. Good, right, good. good to hear you, mate. Good to hear you. Good to hear you. Now, right? we, 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 yeah. just, just in no more, it sounds like you're about half a mile down the road. I, I can I can see you fine, mate. We can see he's putting it right close up now so you can hear him. Right, Jamie. You know, you know, it, it reminds me like when my mother in law like FaceTimes me or the missus or whatever, man, and all you see is the ear. When you're like, <laughs> 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 right, Jamie, you're gonna to have to you're gonna to have to shout up uh, so we can hear you. Um, right, so 
the premise of the game, Jamie, as you know, you're a Rangers supporter, you listen to this podcast. I am going to read a description of a player. Oh, uh, wait a minute, he's disappeared. Oh, no, Jamie. <laughs> oh, what? Oh, he's, oh, he's, he's back. back. He's back. I am going to read out a description of a player. When you know that player, you buzz in with your buzzer. If you get it right, you get a point. It's the first two points that wins. If you get it wrong, however, you pass the play to the other player and you cannot buzz back in. Do you understand the rules, Jamie? Yep. There we go. Go on, Johnny. Johnny, he, he, he speaks English, man. You know what I mean, don't he? I'm just, listen, I'm just, I, I just want to... Right. Jamie, do you understand what I'm saying, Jamie? <laughs> right, I'm going to flip the coin to see who you're playing. Heads it's Stephen, tails it's Toll, and it is tails for Toll. Tails for Toll. And yeah, this week, yeah, gentlemen, toll, Toll's tails. That's a, that's a name I'm good name. This week, gentlemen, well, you know how the, we've been kind of going around the world of foreign players that have played in Scottish football. We are going to Italianos. Oh, yeah. Nice. Stephen and Chris think themselves as a bit of a Italian football ex. Um, I'm going to make a fucking arse here. <laughs> oh, yeah. But, but it's yeah. Italians that have played in Scotland. Italians that have played in Scotland. Yeah, right, 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 right. Um, so you're going to have to shout out real loud. What's your buzz going to be, Jamie? Can he hear you? <laughs> Geo. 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 Okay. So what's yours? Golasso. Nice. Right, okay, first player out, boys. Here we go for the pies. This centre half was a surprise arrival in Scottish football after arriving from Parma. A classy centre half, he captained Kilmarnock to the Scottish League Cup final, though couldn't play due to injury. Did you shout something there, Jamie? No. Um, he considered by most Kelly supporters to be one of the greatest to play for the club, and he actually finished his career in Italy, and he played about 200 games for Kilmarnock. Come on, Chris Toll. Nah, nah. Stephen, do you know the answer to this? No. <laughs> oh my word, this is disappointing, boys. Disappointing. I'll he's, give you it he's then. He's a first name. No. Right, I'll give you this. I can't believe Kilmarnock supporters are shouting at the podcast just now. Manuel Pasquale. Oh, Pasquale. oh shit. Unbelievable. Pasquale. That's, that's that. so bad, man. Uh, by the way, I've deleted that League Cup final out of my brain, so... <laughs> there you go. Right, OK, next player out then, boys. Hopefully you get on better with this one. This Italian under-21 crap arrived on these shores from Roma. Originally a full-back, he established himself as a centre-half when he signed by, he was signed by Tommy Burns in 1997. Oh, Enrico Anoni. Enrico Anoni. Oh, no, no, Anoni, on Anoni! <laughs> 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 there you go, 1-0, Chris. Right, next player up. Here you go, Jamie. Try and get back in here. This player only spent one season in Scotland when he was signed for Rangers by... Golasso! Chris. Marco Negri. Oh, no! I will continue with the crew. You went too early, mate. You went too yeah, early. You went too early. Uh, he was signed for Rangers Smith by Watersmith. In the, he's, in the, I know who it is. Making 34 league appearances at the age of 19. He left at the end of the season. Come for on, you, Jamie. Ireland. Jamie, you know, you're kidding me on. I'll keep going, I'll keep going. Uh, to newly promoted Sarnitina uh, before moving to Milan, where he made just under... Come on, Jamie! He also managed... Yes! He's got it! He's got it! I said he said it four times. <laughs> there we go. See, we can't hear you, Jamie. Right, I'm going to have to listen out quickly, because this is the last one, right? This is, this is a shootout, right? Okay. Right. This friend of the show scored 32 goals. Oh, that's all. <laughs> Marco Negri. It's Marco Negri. Well done, well done. Yes! I can't no, believe that. No, no pies for you, Jimmy boy. <laughs> <laughs> ah, go on then. Done. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> it's an absolute shambles this week, but Jamie, we're going to let you walk away with the pies because uh, yeah, I think you're at a disadvantage because we can hardly hear you. So you can have the pies, Jamie. Well played, sir. Well done. Well uh, done, Jamie. If you want pies from Pie Sports, head to their website, piesports.com. Football daft with G4 claims. Been involved in a road traffic accident? Call them now on 01698. 767 172. Hey, folks.
Sports Football Daft has teamed up with Platinum CBD from Columbia Care, the league winners in CBD, to give you the opportunity to try it for free. You heard that right? For free. Free! Head to call-care.uk and use the discount code DAFTFREE. That's call-care.uk and the discount, discount code DAFTFREE to try the 10% oil or their capsules for nada. CBD is thought to help with a number of daily issues. This may include sleep, chronic pain, anxiety, depression, stress, inflammation, gut issues, brain fog, and more. In a post-lockdown world where our mental health might not be at its strongest, it can be a lifesaver some, for some people. Let me tell you about it, though. Columbia Care have brought their expertise in CBD from the US to create a sophisticated CBD wellness range for the UK, including CBD oil and peppermint and unflavoured, and easy to take soft gel capsules. All the range is free from THC, it's vegan friendly, it's 100% organic and backed with scientific research to ensure that you get a premium CBD product every time. Now, I need to tell you about this, right, because I thought that it would taste the same as any other CBD, but see when it says it's unflavoured, it's unflavoured, there's no taste to this. Mm -hmm. it's, it's mental and you know that CBD can... It, it can be a bit stinking if we're going to be honest with ourselves. See, this stuff, this stuff, honest to God, right hand up to God, it's absolutely completely devoid of any taste. It's just like putting water in your, in your mouth. So as so you can do that or you can take the capsules. And like I said, I've, I've had great results for it. I've not had any sort of back pain in the last week since I started taking it. And I've actually ordered another package for myself. So I'll be getting that through the post shortly. Um, any use try that yet? Yeah, I mean my wife swears by it now. Like she's got a chronic illness. She has a thing a condition called ulcerative colitis, and she's found taking CBD has really helped her with that. And we've had a few people reaching out for us on football daft as well, saying they've, they've tried it. And I mean the deal we've got here is incredible because like the capsules will normally cost you upwards of forty pound, and you can get them for free. Try it for free. You can try the oil for free, and you know it. Like Chris says, I mean, it's helped. It helps with the anxiety. It helps. It helps on a good night's sleep. That's why yeah, I've used it. Because when you're up doing breakfast shows at half past four in the morning, you need a good night's sleep, and it's really helped me with that. And do you know what else I find as well? See, when you wake up, when you've taken it the night before, you, when you wake up, you're not that tired, way. Aye. You know yeah. I mean? Sometimes, like when you wake up, even if you're getting up for work or whatever, you're like kind of groggy. It's it's mental. Like, since I've been taking it, I've been waking up. I've been absolutely ready to go so yeah uh, i wholeheartedly recommend this honest to god it's brilliant now we can sort you out with a cheeky discount on platinum cbd so that you can try it for yourselves head to call-care.uk and use the discount code daft free that's call-care.uk and the discount code daft free let us know how you got on as we go football daft with platinum cbd <laughs> It's now time for Grado's Free Riddles on Football Day. Unfortunately though, the great man cannot be here today. Uh, so I have three riddles for you in Grado's absence. Um, we give you three riddles. We'll give them out to the boys and then we throw one out to you. Uh, and all you've got to do is guess what football or, or someone related to Scottish football we are talking about. First of all, I've got to say congratulations to everyone got in last week's riddle, uh, which we threw out to you. We asked you to solve this one because we had no fucking idea what it was in the show. <laughs> uh, we got the answers from Grado. The, the clue was, been jamming with American Idol host. We had no idea about this, but it was, of course... Benjamin Seacrest. Fish. That's, that's his worst one, yeah. <laughs> it was, it was uh, but listen, the listeners got it. They absolutely nailed it. Congratulations to Albert's Legend 11 on YouTube who got in first with the answer. So well done, you. You will go on the leaderboard. Imagine that was George Alberts. I know. The hammer sitting there. Hearing that he's got the riddle, just sitting smoking a Marlboro light or something. <laughs> <laughs> With Miss Germany, on the other hand. <laughs> That's what happened. Uh, so you get yourself on the scoreboard. So the current score on the scoreboards are Chris 20, me 17, Stephen 9, Ryan 1, Jack 1, Ian Miko 1, Ryan Dunbar 1, John Mitchell 1, and Albert's Legend on the board now with 1. So there we go. 
Um, right, boys, I have got this is your chance, Stephen. Come on, you can get some. I'm I, I'm just here for the bands for this section of the show. Right, okay. I, I don't I, even mind if Stephen gets all three of them. I know. If yeah, I if I, oh, if, I get, if I get one, I'm buzzing. Across, I like that. Hands across the divide, Chris. I really like that. Oh, I don't know nice. if you can get that. Right, okay. Let's see if we can get these this week. Right, first one. Weight place is a tremendous victory. Weight place is a tremendous victory. Weight place? Mm-hmm. W-A-I-T? No, the other one. Oh, way. the lifting weights. Jim Goodwin. Well done, Chris. I fucking just said weights and I went to go gym something and you just fly in there with Jim Goodwin. Tremendous victory. Good one. There you Such go. Such well. a good... That was... A, that was oh, for fuck's sake. That was easy. That one, I don't know. Right, next <laughs> one out. Next one out. Here we go. Baptizer pursues relationship with another. <laughs> I love the way you tell these stories. These Bapti- Baptizer Pursues relationship with another. John Sutter. Oh, well done. <laughs> well done. That is tremendous work. <laughs> tremendous work. Right, okay. <laughs> I know. Final uh, one. Right, you final one and then we'll get one for the listeners. <laughs> this average man is full of passion. <laughs> this average man is full of passion. Average man is Joe. Joe Lovell. Nope. That's what I was thinking. That was a, that's a good shout, Joe. Is Joe Lovell even a footballer? I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> Who's the second part of that clue? Full of passion. Got the first part. People are shouting at the podcast right now. Oh man, this is oh. pure this is pure dead air as well, isn't it? I know. Yeah. People are shouting out the answer right at the podcast. <laughs> wherever they're listening to it in their cars, going into work. Joe Ryder. <laughs> <laughs> Currently in the Scottish game. Joe. Joe Aribo. No, it's not Joe Aribo, no. <laughs> Joe Joe Tortolano. No, uh... Friend of the show. <laughs> Hold Joe, on. Joe Lewis? No. No. Joe full Lewis. of passion. Think what, what if you're full of passion, you've got something. Joe Horn. Joe Horn. <laughs> <laughs> Joe Horny. <laughs> He's still in the Scottish game, Joe. Joe Shaughnessy. <laughs> Joe Shaughnessy. Is he a player? He sounds like uh, uh, Joe Shagger. Uh, oh, uh, Joe, Thump- Joe Thumper. Oh, the one come on, one. Chris, come on. You should especially get this one. Joe. Joe. I'm fucking stuck for this one, man. Full of, full of passion. If you're full of passion, you have... Joe Harden. No, no. Joe Stoddard. Joe Hart. Joe Hart. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well played. Well played. <laughs> brilliant. Brilliant. Chris has got his heads in his hands. This average man has a full sized aortic pump. <laughs> <laughs> There's so many ways I could have went with heart, but I thought full of passion. Hey. Got a riddle for the punters, however, for next week. See if you can get this one. Mr. Loverman's Scottish girl is sad. Mr. Lo- <laughs> Mr. Loverman's Scottish girl is sad. I Football daft with G4 claims. Find them on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at G4 Claims Limited. It is time for the El Dorado Swanky Moment of the Week. Remember, ask for El Dorado at any swanky bar. It's easy to drink, short, 
fruity and fresh with that little trace of caffeine. Available at all local convenience stores and you can follow them on Facebook and Instagram, El Dorado Tonic Wine, or check them out, eldoradotonicwine.com. We celebrate the swanky taste of El Dorado every week on Football Daft by picking out swanky moments from Scottish football. You get them to vote on them on Twitter, at Football Daft Pod, and we have the results from last week in Ooh. last place with only 4%. It was the fact that football daft got mentioned in Parliament. It was kind of mentioned in Parliament, but it was tongue in cheek. It was tongue in cheek, but four percent. It, so it was a reach, wasn't it? It was a it reach. Was a reach. Aye, it was a reach. So Grant was in last place with that one. And third, it was Grado's choice of, and I loved Douglas Parks at w- <laughs> SWPL. Uh, it, that the sponsorship that Douglas Park put to the w- SWPL got twenty four percent which means it's between Chris and Stephen for that first place. Unfortunately, Chris was in second. He couldn't make it two weeks in a row. Scotland's performance against Denmark was second, which means with 43% of the vote, it was a victory for Stephen Purden with his nomination of the Celtic AGM. He's went for the low hanging fruit on that one, hasn't he? he <laughs> right, like Stephen, him. you win. Like you win, so you get to pick your moment first. On you go. Uh... Right, I've not used one for my club for a while. I'm going to use Roy Mackay in the first training session of Giovanni Van Bronckhorst reign at Ibrooks. Roy Mackay telling Ryan Kent, keep it simple. Keep it simple. Tricks are for the circus. <laughs> did he? He didn't know it said tricks are for the circus. <laughs> Shut up. Did he, how did you see that one? So you did not see that. Roy McGuire. Tricks are for the circus. Kate, they were kicking the ball around in circles trying to control. And Kent done a wee trick. And Roy McGuire says, Oh, Kent. And he says, Kent, keep it simple. Tricks are for the circus. <laughs> Love that. Love that. <laughs> so my swanky moment of the week is McGuire says, Tricks are for the circus. <laughs> okay, I might not be able to fit that in Twitter, but we'll, we'll... tricks are for the circus. Tricks are for the circus. Chris, have you got one? No. <laughs> oh, fuck's sake. You need do you know what? Do you know what? Do you know what? Do you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with the Celtic uh, Christmas advert. The Celtic Christmas. Because do you know what? You see about a self-deprecation. It's a good fucking buzz. And Celtic rip the push out themselves every single year with us. So I'm going, I'm going for the Christmas advert. Also, I don't know why. When I watched that, I was nearly fucking greeting. Oh my god! I don't right. know why, honestly. I felt that way, man, on Sunday when I was watching Rangers. <laughs> <laughs> um, I did. I have to say, I did see the advert. I do like the the piss take Jota coming out the kind of uh, chalet, like the last Christmas chalet. That was that was quite good. I like that. I like that. Um, right in Gregor's absence, I guess I've got to nominate something. Um, I would like to nominate uh, my friend uh, Ross Wayne. Uh, at the Falkirk Montrose game, the Montrose game keeper looked like he was a bit of a hipster, so he started this banter that we just abused him with hipster banter. All <laughs> we started saying, "You way home to drink brew dog tonight, keeper? You way home for a vegan sausage roll, keeper?" I love this part. in the lower leagues, man. It's brilliant. Oh, I like, love that man. What, in fact, do you know what? I'm actually going to put that as a whole nomination rather than Wayne. Oh, sorry, mate. Uh, lower league patter. I'm going to put down lower league patter. It's for good. my swanky moment nomination. Lower League part is fucking dynamite, man. Aye. It is. It's good fun. It is good fun. So Lower League part are representing the War Leagues. Too much football getting played here. <laughs> oh, then, you, then you go to party Thistle and the roles are reversed. Aye. It's great yeah. fun. Great fun. Yeah. Uh, so what's the what's the one? What's the listeners? The listener nomination comes from Dan Bastianelli on Twitter, and it has to be. Ryan Porteous, <sighs> how it has to be there. It has to go up there. Do we look this, at... People need to read the room here with this podcast, right? Our listenership is about fucking ninety percent Rangers fans. <laughs> There's no way you're going to win if you slate Rangers. There's I would no have way. nominated if if that hadn't been nominated by Dan. I would have nominated that. You've got to pod the shit house, I, I know you don't like it, Stephen, but if that was a sell, if that was a Rangers player doing that shit, you would have loved it, and that would have been your nomination. You would have, you would have to be fair. You would have given me a class in that. Aye, aye, very good, very good. Just, I, I'm going to just put it out there. Hey, I don't like, hey. the, I don't like the boy. I don't like him. Hey, <laughs> jokes are for the circus. 
<laughs> Tricks. I'm a joke. I know, mate. I was a joke. I know, mate. I know. It's not. It's, it's, it's not. It wasn't a joke. It was. It was, it was a personal attack. It, it was, and it was aimed at me. <laughs> Imagine they just went like that. Do I look happy, Stephen Purden? <laughs> oh, it's, it's ever since I've come at FIFA in this charity match. Please, please, someone get in touch with Ryan Porteous and I get him to ask, are you happy, Stephen Purden? Please, please, that would be amazing. <laughs> yes, do that. That. Please do that. That would be fantastic. Uh, so there's your swanky moments of the week. Stephen Purden, what is yours? Mine's is Roy McKay telling Ryan Kent, keep it simple. Joke. Oh, jokes are for the sucker. <laughs> Tricks are for the sucker. Tricks are for, you fucked it for me, though. Tricks are Tricks for, for the suckers. Silly yeah. rabbit. Yes, Tricks what? are for kids. <laughs> <laughs> uh, mine is the Celtic Christmas advert. Uh, I'll go for lower league. Year. I'll go for lower league banter. And Dan's uh, from the listeners is Porteous Shit Housery. Mm. Get voting now for your swanky moment of the week. Uh, head to our Twitter right now uh, and you can vote there with El Dorado Tonic Wine. Scotland's own is now Football Daft. Football Daft with G4 Claims. Been involved in a road traffic accident? Get them now at notatfaultclaims.com. Remember, you get more content from Football Daft on Patreon. You can hit us up right now, patreon.com forward slash football daft. Lots of tiers to choose from. You can give us a five in a month, seven fifty a month, or you can go up to even ten pound a month. Different ranges and levels. Remember, if you do join up, you can get cameos from the boys. Uh, you can get maybe Christmas messages. You know, you can get. Oh, Christmas. there we go. We're, introdu- we're introducing a twenty pound level as well. Where Stephen will pick your wings up for school. <laughs> that, might that might not be up there but you can get Christmas messages if you sign up to our top tail and then next year when we're back in the studio once Panto's done once we've got football daft meets again you can come into the studio you can experience the podcast if you're up on that top tier as well so it's a perfect Christmas present for your loved ones patreon.com forward slash football daft get involved there you get video versions you get outtakes uh, you get lots and lots of stuff and also up there you'll get all our old teammates uh, and we're going to let you hear one of those right now as we caught up with Aberdeen's prolific winger Mr Niall McGinn Worst Dressed uh, There's definitely a couple up there and he was on your podcast not so long ago Mark Reynolds <laughs> <laughs> He was brilliant. Dude. Oh, he was good, lad. He was good. Him and Adam place. Rooney. Adam Rooney's definitely up there. He still wears his, like, I think he wears his kids, uh, like his track suits and stuff. And Mark Rounds, he still wears his Ric Flair jeans and stuff. And, ah, <laughs> oh, man, that's <laughs> lost in it. Oh, uh, big cuts and all he that. Just, I just, uh, just, he still dresses like a dad, you know what I mean? I thought he'd come out of his maybe youth or something, but nah, no chance. <laughs> brilliant. Moniest. Oh, Jesus. Uh, I've got a couple Willow Flood and Barry Robson that's that's two of the moniest like every day like Willow Flood hey, Stuart, you played with them at two different clubs and all Jesus I get, Christ I get mixed, I get I them mixed up sometimes and all by the way what a nightmare the thing is like, <laughs> Willow Flood and Rabo like they were like good mates but they absolutely hated each other like they were always <laughs> constantly like on each other like it was like a love hate relationship but <laughs> Willow Flood and Barry Robson the two of the moniest people you could ever play with but two people that you wanted in your team all day long who do you want to back you up in a fight I don't know we'll be probably probably Andy Considine uh, Big Ash Taylor guys like that I think but Aye. definitely not Johnny Hayes he'd just run away <laughs> <laughs> I have after you put a shite in your pocket. <laughs> <laughs> I think my think story might come out later. I think. <laughs> yes. Best looking. There was a guy. There was a guy I played with at Celtic. A boy, the uh, Danny Fox. Fox. He was. He was a good looking boy. Sky. Sky boy. Left uh, back. Yeah, left, left back. back. Danny Fox. He was, he was. He was a real good looking boy. But another one as well. I think Freddie Longberg back in the day. Even though he was short stint at Celtic, he's probably a real. Good looking boy, but it's funny. It's speak of, speak about Freddie Longberg. I remember uh, used to see him in these Calvin Klein adverts, and used to see him uh, with these big, massive like tattoos, like just above his private area, and uh, mm-hmm. like they were like 
I don't know, they were like tattoos of maybe like two pumas or something. You think, ah, oh, it looks cool or whatever. You see him and his Calvin Klein's pulling off. But when he's at Celtic, he didn't actually have them tattoos. He obviously put the tattoos on his body for the... <laughs> 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 got, got the mighty chewing gum packet. <laughs> <laughs> Teacher's pet. Oh, Johnny has 100%. He's just... Even when he, when he left Aberdeen, first of all, I think he spoke to Derek McInnes every day and it was just adamant that it was always going to happen if, if he ever did leave Celtic that he was coming back. And he right. just he's just like his wee yes man, he's just his go-to man. <laughs> he's in the pocket and he thinks he's manager most of the time, Johnny. Like he's nearly picking the team for him, I think. <laughs> no, yeah, definitely Johnny Hayes. He's, he's definitely the, the gaffer's boy. Most skillful. I think, I think, I've always said this, the most naturally gifted... I know it's not maybe like it, it is skill in a way, but naturally gifted is, is definitely Paddy McCourt. Paddy McCourt was Aye. one of the best players I've ever ever played with. I had him. I was quite lucky because I signed for Derry City. I knew nothing about him. I walked in. I just seen this. I just seen this big fuzzball. I just seen this big <laughs> big, big flock of her. And uh, once we started training, I was like, wow, this boy's like a joke. He's just he's sensational, unbelievable. He, he was quicker with the ball than he was without the ball. Uh, he just made people for fun and training. Uh, and then just just his natural ability was was just sensational, and he, he's always been the most naturally gifted player that I've ever played with. Skillful, like Alexa probably James Madison was skillful. Uh, mm-hmm. His short stint at, at Aberdeen, you just knew he was going to go on to bigger and better things. Uh, there's a young lad at the moment, Connor McLennan. He, he's he's got all the attributes in the world just to go on and kick on. He's only mm-hmm. like 19, 20, but skillful. He, he's like you he, he have a lot of players. Like for me, like I'm. I'm just basic and stuff and keep things simple, keep things right. You have a wee maybe wee trick up your sleeve. You, you have these players that are unbelievable step overs, etc. But up there, Paddy McCourt definitely, he's been the most skillful and most naturally talented, for sure. Is he still playing the new Paddy McCourt? No, he's retired. He, he, he's, done, he's done his coaching badges and he, he's back out there. He said he's working in team management now back there, which is good. And uh, I think uh, I think he'll just, I think he, he's always been interested in football. He, he always had a good knowledge of the game. I, I've shared a room with him for years and he was always just keen on, on doing something like that. And thankfully he's went on to, to sort of do that. But you look at his like his goals he scored over the years and Aye. Even Aye. how he was in training and stuff. And I don't think he ever scored a goal when he ran any less than 45 yards with the ball. What are you speaking <laughs> on? Well, yeah. he, even when he came back after like leaving Celtic and stuff, when he came back and played in Ireland for a bit, there was a goal and he must have took it around about seven or eight players and just put it in the bottom corner thinking, wow, that's just sensational. Right. And, uh, it was just a pleasure to play with Paddy and uh, thankfully he's went on and he's done his coaching badges and he's moving into sort of maybe management now in the next few years, I'd imagine. Worst trainer? Uh, worst trainer? <laughs> Kay Lafferty, <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, the big man, just like he's just like a guy that you think, oh, he he's just in on trial every day. There's some guy just like he just lifted him <laughs> off his feet and he's put him into the squad. But on this day, he, he, like for Northern Ireland, he was just he was brilliant for us in the in the European Championship run that we got the Euros. He was sensational. Anything he touched just went in the goal. But regarding training, oh my God, he was terrible. He's like he was playing with like trampolines on his feet. <laughs> Well, I thought I seen him in is he was you on trial at somebody recently? I seen something in the news about him recently, I can't remember what it was. No, Where's so, it waiting? Oh, there's more clubs than Tiger Woods. So he ended up <laughs> <Aye>. <laughs> He's been in Italy a few times in different countries. So Aye. He signed for that Regina team. Aye. I mm-hmm. think he's left him, isn't he? No, just yeah, last week or so, I think he left him. Yeah, he, he's left a few weeks ago, so he's out of contract, so he's a free agent, so 100% he'll probably be back in Scotland shortly. Aye, he could, be back, aye. he could maybe be back at Hearts, would you think? Hearts, maybe. Uh-huh. Or at Indy United or somebody like that. Mm. You can see aye. him at one of these. Somebody take a chance on him, like always, like he's, he's got all the attributes, somebody will just take a chance on him, because he had a, I thought he was brilliant for Hearts when he played for Hearts before he went on. Oh, obviously, he got his move to Rangers then. Who never gets the round in? Big Josh McGuinness. <laughs> Aye. He's probably nights out, team nights out, he would probably drink the most, but he would never contribute. He would always shy away from maybe even coffees and teas and stuff like that. He would always be at the forefront of being the first man there, but he would never pay. Never. Never. You, never. See, you just cut you off here. See, you said you're 33. I know it's weird because, see, when I think of you and there's, there's other players like, I know you still think you're dead young. A, a young Aye. player. Do you ever get that with some players where you just go, Aye. Ah, he's young. I'm not saying that you're old, but yeah, it's but like you're only as young as a you sure of, like how you feel as like your body. It's like Matt Butchel, Matt Butchel's still young to me. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Matt Butchel. <laughs>
biggest bam up merchant? Uh, I think the likes of your Kyle Lafferty's and the likes of your Josh McGuinness, especially in the Northern Ireland setup, them two guys are just constantly the jokers of the pack. Uh, club football, it's like we've had a few over years. Like Scott Brown was all up, always up to madness, and uh, likes of Johnny Hayes and stuff. And like, John, like Johnny's just, he's just can be a wee horrible human at times. You just don't mess with him. If you do something bad on him, you know it's it's coming ten times worse than us. That's why I've always thought we can good friends. And, uh, and I never gotten the bad side of him. Top shagger. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I'm gonna need to cut this question out, man. The fucking no, no. It's like it's like MD has played with Angels. It's easy because they just see McGregor. Right, you see Alan McGregor. Else, it's like. <laughs> It's one of those ones you have to be careful with as well, isn't it? Uh, exactly. <laughs> see, see the young lads coming through now, and, and teams like this. There's, there's a couple of young lads at Aberdeen. Like I probably can't say names, but it's just I think it's just with the times that we're moving forward in with social media, etc., and and probably like dating ups and stuff. How e- easy it is for maybe the younger lads to, to obviously meet right. people. Obviously, they have their nights out and stuff, but it's a, it's, a, it's a thought of like maybe sending the message, and all of a sudden you're you're probably meeting these girls. So I think it's just the younger generation now, but. I had a few at Celtic and we definitely have a few at Aberdeen, but I probably can't name any name. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> yeah, sorry. Best you've played with? Yeah, no, well, uh, uh, there's been so many good players I've played with, like, to, to name a few, like, such as, like, say, in the Northern Ireland setup, you've got, like, Johnny Evans, you've got, like, Steve Davis, uh, David Healy, obviously, back in the day when I sort of came into the squad, Aaron Hughes, just all sort of good pros. At Celtic, I had, obviously, Scott Brown and, Robbie Keane was there for a short stint, who, who, he was brilliant, uh, but the most naturally gifted, as I said earlier, was definitely the best player, it was probably Paddy McCourt, and a guy that, another person, like Aidan McGeady was sensational, the, uh, with two feet he was just an absolute joy to train with, and obviously just uh, just work with, and another one, like, well, another one probably stands out there, he was obviously there for a short stint when I was there, and then obviously moved on, but regarding training, and even obviously playing on the big stage, but he used to never give the ball away and like the boxes we always used to do with Nakamura and he was just, oh, he was a shambles. He was very good. Aye. That player. See, Nakamura is one of the ones, if you're a Celtic fan, he's in your, he's in your all team, all time 11, isn't he, mate? Nakamura. <laughs> Shut class, up, Stevie. Shut the fuck up, you bastard. We, we, no, we had a top 11 <laughs> one day, we, we sat and spoke about our, our top players, mate. I'm a Rangers fan, Gray's a Rangers fan, and Tolls are Celtic fans, you can see that. And, he put Scott Sinclair in ahead of Nakamura. You know, you know, I know why? Because I completely forgot about Nakamura. So that's teammates <laughs> finished. Cheers now. We'll move on. <laughs> <laughs> that's him cut off. <laughs> Football daft with G4 claims. Been involved in a road traffic accident? Call them now on 01698 767 172. Well, that's it for the show, boys. We've been a man down again. Poor Grado. Looking after the baby, dressing up as a woman, you know, doing the radio. It's, it's a tough life for the old boys. Yeah. Some guys can date and some guys can. Well, you're doing, yeah, exactly. You were doing the breakfast radio today, Stephen. Breakfast as radio as show, podcast, River City, panel, see, being see a father. You, see when you're doing like the rehearsals, for the, but do you have to dress up as a woman when you're doing the rehearsals? You just wait till you get to the stage. They will next week when we're in the theatre rehearsal. Have you got your costumes yet? Ah, have you never heard to... the phrase dress rehearsal, John? I have heard the phrase, mm-hmm. yeah. but I thought you know, you, do you, so you have to speak like go and give us your panel voice, Stephen. Well, um, right. so <clears throat> me and Grado come out, uh huh. Mm-hmm. We come out and we're like, oh, we have arrived. Yeah. Oh, sister, I think they're laughing at us. Oh, sister, what's so funny about us? Have they never seen a couple of beautiful bouncing busty buds before? Beautiful. Beautiful, mate. Honestly, and then, like do, then, then do you go into just normal Stephen voice? Ah, or... you have, like, you're, like, when you're talking and that, and you're like, eh, I can start shouting like that. Mm. Ah, right, good, good, good. Well, listen, there's still tickets available for the Pavilion panel, so you can see Stephen in action. You can catch him in Cinderella at the Pavilion pantomime. There we go. Little plug for you there, Stephen. There we go. Uh, Thank you, John. And we've also got to give a mention to the Pat Gallagher Memorial Match, which our friend um, who edits this show 
and the show would pretty all you boys would be cancelled without his editing skills. Let's put it that way. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Um, Ryan, who also presents Celtic Daft, he has got a memorial match for his dad who sadly passed away. It's happening um, this weekend, Sunday at 11.45 at Home Park, the home to Clyde Bank FC and uh, Yoker Mm -hmm. and all that sort of stuff. And it's Ryan's Boys Against Marty's Legends. It's £10 a head for people who want to play and there'll be I do a collection there and they're raising money for Children's First, a children's charity, uh, which you can get all the details. We're great to tweet out the details, so keep an eye on our Twitter. If you could throw a couple of quid uh, to raise money for a brilliant charity, that would be great and we'd really appreciate it. Uh, for Ryan as well, that would be brilliant. Um, that's it for Football Daft for this week. Um, games at the weekend, boys. Celtic have got Aberdeen. Yeah. So, sorry, sorry, John, just down there to add here. Uh... Paris and Man have just broke forward and went 1 0 up against Manchester City on the 14th minute. So, Pep and his boys have got it all to do. Thank you, uh, Paul. We'll, we'll, we'll come back to you later to see how that's going. Uh, Celtic Aberdeen at the weekend, Chris. Yep. What uh, you Turn on it, Celtic. Turn on. Let out, tough game for Gio in his first game in the league. Very tough game. You, it's a hard place to go. Like I said, on Rangers daft. Is it Tyne Castle? No, Livy. Like I said, on Rangers Daft during the week, it's a very, very, very tough run of fixtures. It's a baptism of fire for Gio the next few weeks, but I think it's a good thing. And I think in the next few weeks, from now until January, he will know or find out what his players are all about. So bring it on. Uh, Dundee versus Motherwell, Hearts versus St. Mellon, Ross County versus Dundee United and St. Johnson versus Hibs are the other fixtures. Game of the weekend there, I would say, but I think Dundee Motherwell will be quite tasty, actually. I think that'll be a decent match. Um, mm-hmm. In the Championship, uh, Inverness versus Kilmarnock on the Friday night, top of the table. Champion. That's it, that'll be a good game, man. That will be a good game. And then elsewhere, it is the Scottish Cup this weekend. Yes, buddy. I tell you what, I wish Grado was here for this week. I think this could be a potential banana skin. Auchinleck Talbot versus Hamilton. Oh! David Templeton, friend of the show, has just hung up his boots. Hamilton. Hamilton has he really? Yes. Has he really? Mm-hmm. Um, we, we spoke to Ross earlier on. Quite Bank versus Quaid's there. The Derby at all. Yeah, I how, how, where are you getting Auckland Lake Talbot are going to beat Hamilton Aki's for? I of Hamilton. Hamilton. Five pound bet, John. Five pound bet. I'm not putting. I've like. I'm not putting. I, you've got to give me better odds than just a fiver against a fiver as Talbot against Hamilton. All right then. I will. I, if if Tal if Talbot beat Hamilton, I will give you ten pounds. <laughs> right, right. right. Wait a minute. But if if uh, Talbot, sorry, if Hamilton beat Talbot, then you give me one pound. Right, brilliant. Okay, that that's that's a good bet. Right, okay. Kelty Hearts versus Montrose. Kelty Hearts. Montrose are a good team, by the way. I, I saw know. Them first hand on Saturday. They're a good team. Kelty Hearts. Yeah, John. We do this. We do this every week now. Where's your passion for your club? You go through all the fixtures. Who's Falkirk playing? We're playing Wraith Rovers at home. Right. What's he, he, John? Right. That's, right. A tough, right. that's a tough game. That's a tough. Right. Game. I know it's a tough game. Right. I'm a Rangers fan. Yes. I've been to the bottom. Oh, oh, sorry, we're going over to our our correspondent. You you take this one, you take this one, Chris. Um, Liverpool have just gone a goal ahead with a fucking 40 yard thunder bastard from Thiago. Oh, what a strike that is. And uh, if you are listening to this podcast on Saturday afternoon, you'll already have score by this point, so there's no point in this. Right, anyway, so that, that's it. Scottish Cup this weekend. Lots of things happen in the Championship. Boys, uh, thank you very much, as ever, for joining oh, us. Oh, what a goal, Sorry, John. Let you get back to the bloody football now. Uh, uh, remember, get uh, a break. You don't strike them better than that. No, that's, that's Pedro oh, Mendes. Well, one of the ones that goes down and then up the way. That's right. Pedro Mendes esque at Park Kid in the 4 2 game. We will leave that on football daft as Chris and Stephen apply for their jobs in Sky Sports Centre. Hey, hey, it's BT uh, Sport. BT, BT, BT Sport, mate. Plus, they, they couldn't afford me until. Oh, I know, especially not after we've been in the, uh, that music video. Aye, Danko's Danko. music video. 
I was going to say Dargo there, and then I remembered that was an ex fucking Clyde player for back in the day or something. We'll leave it at that. <laughs> Thanks for listening this week. This week, <laughs> get us on Twitter at Football Daft Pod, Football Daft Podcast on Instagram, and just search for Football Daft on Facebook. We'll see you on the next one. Audio Frontier.